Hello everyone, welcome back to the show. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Mike, this is my whiteboard, and today we're gonna to be talking about early assignment risk. So a lot of people actually sent me some emails yesterday regarding some dividend risk with in the money calls, which we'll actually get to. But first I wanna just review exactly what assignment risk is, whether it applies to certain options and not others, and one way that you can quickly check and see whether you're at risk of early assignment or not. So let's go on to the first side and we'll talk about a few things that we're gonna to cover today. The very first thing is that we need to realize that assignment really only applies to in the money short options. If I'm short the option, then I basically am holding the risk in terms of letting the other person have the ability to exercise or not. We can't exercise short options because we don't actually own the option. We have sold that option to another party and they actually have the ability to exercise that. So when we're looking at assignment, it's really going to deal with in the money short options because in the money options are going to have that real value. So we'll break that down a little bit and we'll talk about how to calculate that value. There's also a differentiation between American versus European options. So one American option is going to act and perform a lot differently than a European option. So we're gonna break down the differences between those and we'll give you some examples of European options which are really the ones that we don't have to worry about in terms of early assignment prior to expiration. And lastly, we're gonna talk about extrinsic value and why that's the key factor to determining whether we are at risk potentially of early assignment or not. So let's go on to the first thing we're gonna talk about which is in the money short options and we'll go on to discuss how we can calculate whether we are going to be at risk and really just understand where in the money is for puts and where in the money is for calls. So early assignment does not apply to out of the money options because of the fact that out of the money options do not have any real value at expiration. An out of the money option has its value because it has a certain amount of time that is going to be put into that premium and it has a certain amount of implied volatility which are both factors that play into the extrinsic value which is what out of the money options are purely made up of. Out of the money options do not have intrinsic value because they don't have any real value at expiration. So when we're looking at early assignment risk, it's only going to apply to those options that have real value at expiration, and that's going to be the in the money options. So if we're looking at a strike bar here, let's say the stock price is this blue icon right here. And when we're looking at puts and calls, we need to realize that Puts are going to be out of the money when they're below the stock price, and it's going to be the opposite. Everything I say here is going to be the opposite for calls. So when we're talking about puts and whether they're out of the money or in the money, we know that puts are out of the money when they're below the stock price because if we just think about what a put contract is, a put contract is the right to sell 100 shares of stock at a certain strike price. So if I sold that option to someone else, someone else has the right to exercise that long put and sell their shares at a certain strike. So if we imagine that this blue icon is the stock price, a put is going to be out of the money when it's below the stock price because they can just sell their shares at the current market price. The current market price in this example is higher than the put strike. So it doesn't make any sense for them to exercise their put. Why would they sell their shares, exercise the right to sell their shares at a strike or a price that's below the current market price? They would not. And that's why assignment risk and early assignment risk really only applies to in the money options. So when we're looking at puts, it would make sense in this scenario that we would potentially be at risk for early assignment. The put owner can sell their shares at this strike, which is well above the current market price. So let's say our strike is at 100 and the current mark is at $90 for the shares. Instead of selling their shares that they might own at $90, what they can do is sell their shares at 100 if they own this put option. So they can either exercise the right to do so, or they can close out of that put option, which would most likely be at a profit if they're long the put and the stock price ended up going below that strike, which would make it in the money. So when we're talking about in the money with puts, it's going to be options that are above the stock price. And when we're looking at out of the money, it's for options that are below the stock price. And the opposite is true for calls. So for out of the money with calls, it would be strikes that are above the current stock price. And when we're looking at in the money for calls, it would be strikes that are below the stock price. Because 
a call option is just the opposite. Instead of it having the right to sell 100 shares, it's the right to buy 100 shares. So we definitely want to buy 100 shares at a lower strike than the current stock price, and we would not want to buy the shares at a higher price, which is why they would be out of the money. So when we're talking about puts, out of the money is below the stock price, in the money is above, and the reverse is true for calls. But let's go into the next slide and we'll talk about another aspect of early assignment, and that's going to be the differentiation between American and European style options. So to put it simply, American options are the options that we're dealing with pretty much on a daily basis. So normal equities and most of the underlyings that we trade are going to be American style options. And really the difference is that with American style options, we have the ability to exercise our right on that contract prior to expiration. So if I own a put or if I own a call, I have the right to exercise that prior to expiration. If I'm dealing with European options, however, I do not have that ability. So with European options, I can only exercise at expiration. So expiration would roll through and I would be able to exercise that option if I really wanted to. If not though, I could close out of the position, but in this situation, when we're dealing with most equities, it's going to be American style options. And two of the most frequently traded ones that we trade here that are gonna be the European style are going to be things like SPX and VIX. So if I'm selling options in any of these, I don't really have to worry about early assignment risk because of the fact that it can't be done with European options. So if you're wondering whether your underlying is European versus American, you can usually just look up the actual ticker symbol on the listed website. So if it's listed on the NASDAQ, you can check it out and usually there will be a little blurb about whether it's American style or European style. So definitely check it out, but these two are the most frequently ones that we trade here. At so we've got one last thing we wanna talk about and that's going to be extrinsic value. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk about extrinsic value and how to calculate whether it, we are at risk or not, and why extrinsic value plays a, such a huge role in determining whether we're at assignment risk or not. So extrinsic value is the key because we have to realize that stock has no extrinsic value. There's no time and volatility value with stock because it's something that can be held until either the stock price goes bankrupt or the stock underlying gets bought out. It's only those two things are the things that can happen when we're dealing with stock. So there's no expiration on stock and there's no volatility value in stock because it's just simply the shares that we can purchase. So when we're looking at expiration and we're looking at early assignment, really the owner of the option gives up extrinsic value when they exercise their option. So if I have a strike price and I've got the ability to sell my shares at 55 and the stock price is trading at 50, of course I can do that and I can exercise that ability to sell the shares, but what's gonna happen is I'm going to give up the extra extrinsic value in that option. So if we're looking at an option that's worth $6.50, I know right away that I can calculate the intrinsic value if it's in the money. So all I have to do to calculate that is subtract the current price from the actual strike price. So in this example, I would just subtract 50 from our strike price of 55, and I would know that I have $5 or five points of intrinsic value. So anything over that value is going to be extrinsic value. So let's imagine we've got an option that's worth $6.50. I've got it highlighted in green here because I would assume that this option would probably not be at risk of assignment because it has $150 of extrinsic value. If the option owner were to exercise this put, they would actually give up that $150 because really they're, they're going to be converting this, this long put that they have into short 100 shares or they're gonna just get rid of their position. But in any case, they're gonna give up that extrinsic value. So the more extrinsic value there is in the option, the less likely I believe I would be at risk of early assignment. So with something like this, I've got it highlighted in green because of the fact that I would imagine I probably wouldn't be at risk, but if the situation was something like this, which is something that happens a lot closer to expiration, as we know, expiration 
really dissipates all of the extrinsic value in options. So if I'm one day away from expiration or maybe I'm on the trading day of expiration and this option's worth $5.05, now I'm gonna have to start being worried about being at risk because I know there's five, there's five points of intrinsic value in this option and there's only five cents of extrinsic value. So the person exercising the option is only giving up five cents, so it's much more likely that this option would be assigned rather than this one. So these are the reasons why I think extrinsic value is the key to early assignment risk, but let's wrap it all together with some takeaways for you. So the first takeaway is that, again, it only applies to American style options. If we're dealing with SPX or VIX or any other underlying that has a European style expiration, we don't have to worry about that early assignment risk because we can only exercise the option at expiration. And really, extrinsic value is the key. So for me, when I'm determining whether I believe I'm at risk or not, if my option still has a ton of time and a ton of extrinsic value in that option premium, I'm gonna be less worried about getting assigned early when I compare that to something that's really close to expiration that doesn't have a lot of extrinsic value or something that's really far in the money because something that's really far in the money is going to have less extrinsic value than something that's closer to the at the money strike or somewhere near where the stock price is trading at that point. So if something's either a, deep in the money, or B, closer to expiration, I might be worried about being assigned early and I might take action like closing the trade or rolling it to a further expiration to give it some more extrinsic value. And there is one other thing that we want to consider, and that is dividend risk. So it's a special situation with in the money calls. I actually did an entire other whiteboard on dividend risk, so definitely check it out. You can search for it by clicking on the magnifying glass in the upper right corner of and I'll include it in the description of this episode once we archive it. But thanks so much for tuning in. My name is Mike. If you've got any questions or feedback, shoot me an email here or you can follow me at Mike. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned though. Jim Schultz is coming up next.